Ai, nem mandou. Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Dr. David Simmons. This is Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus is king of the cowboys and everybody's welcome. What that means is God has no respect for persons. We're glad you're here. Listen to the word today because the word of God will change your life. The Bible tells us that it's in the inspired word of God. It was given for correction for instruction in righteousness and so we have to remember that it will change our life every time we hear it by the washing of the water of the word so listen to the word enjoy it and I'll talk to you at the end I'm going to read a couple of scriptures before we get into uh, the teaching tonight and the reason we're going to get read I'm going to read the scriptures I was going through uh, our uh, altar Bibles, and with the uh, altar Bible, uh, looking at the things that they they uh, say, we're going to talk about three plans of salvation tonight. And I did them, I looked, uh, I kind of covered this back in 2014 and I realized that based on what we are uh, doing in church right now with on Sundays with the, about the Holy Spirit. And I'm not sure that we don't need to maybe do a reflection back on our, uh, and I'm not giving this job to anybody in particular right now, and, and I don't want somebody to go through all of them and change everything all of a sudden, so I'm not saying that. But I realized that sometimes you can dump too much information. And if I was to have somebody that... Uh, whether they came to work for me or I was teaching them to do something, I can dump so much information all at once that they didn't get anything I said. And I know that everybody that, that trains people, that has people that work for them, understand uh, that. And so as I was reflecting on what I'm going to teach tonight about uh, three plans of salvation, you're going to find that in the front of our Bibles are altar Bibles, all three plans are underlined and it tells you where to start and, and then it tells you the next place to go and, and I think all of that's good but I realized that it's one of those same things that we can dump so much information all at once that they don't get it. And so um, in light of where we're going with the the names and things of the Holy Spirit and the function of the Holy Spirit in the world today, we've got to also understand what our part of that function is. Because remember this, the Holy Spirit's not going to do anything without you, but He's going to participate in everything that you do. So I want to make sure I'm participating with the Holy Spirit and with God the Father and His plan and not getting ahead of Him or behind Him. Because it can be just as devastating both ways. So looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Go to Hebrews chapter 8 first. I want to look at some things about uh, our covenant. Under, uh, under the new covenant, and we all know that as a New Testament church or a New Covenant church because testament simply is, a, is another meaning for covenant. And we live under the New Covenant. So when we look at Hebrews chapter uh, 8 and verse 6 and 7, it says, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry. Say this with me. I have obtained a more excellent ministry. 
When it talks about Jesus, and in this place, it's a capital H, and so we realize that it's talking about Jesus. The writer of Hebrews is talking about Jesus. Once we became the firstborn of many, or he became the firstborn of many brethren after his death, burial, and resurrection, then I realize that that translates when he went to, when he ascended to heaven, he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. He says, I give it to you. Whatever things you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever things you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So what happened? I became the owner of that covenant. It's a covenant that he paid for that I can't. But it's also a covenant that I have to fulfill in order to... And all I, the first part is I have to receive it first by receiving Jesus Christ as my Savior. But then my participation in that covenant is I have to be ready to give that covenant to others. That, goes through the, that comes through the plan of salvation and, and them accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. There have been many people that have tried to dispute whether it's true or not. I'm going to tell you about a guy in Houston. This guy in Houston, he didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in the Bible. He didn't believe any of the things that uh, came along with the new covenant. So he decided he was going to prove it was wrong. And so the way he did, by the way, he was brought up in a home that he was taught all of his life that, that Jesus was the Christ and he was the only son of God. But he decided he was going to reject that message. He decided to try to outgive God. He says, I'm going to prove that given you'll receive is not true. And he started giving. Well, now he owns a, a, a whole city block in Houston. Because, and he became a Christian simply because he tried to prove that that part of the covenant wasn't true. That it really didn't work. And, and there is a, uh, and, and he gave to the church, and he gave to the poor, and he gave to people in need. He didn't just give to charities. Um, and, I'm ta and I'm not discounting the fact that there's a lot of good charities out there. But there is a covenant that if you bring the money into the storehouse, that you, you get back. And, and that's the part he tried to, to disprove. So let's go on. Verse 6. It says, Now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then there would be no, there, then no place would be have been sought for a second covenant. So we realize, and so let's go over to uh, Hebrews chapter 12, and it goes on, the writer of Hebrews goes on a little bit farther about that covenant. And we're going to look at I think it was, uh, no, hang on just a second. You know what's really cool? You want to know what I use for Bible markers? Um, if you need a, a school, there's Faith Academy, okay? But I didn't write anything on them. I just stuck them in. And we want uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse... Oh, I just found something that said, don't muzzle the ox. That is part of the covenant. I guess you got to get to the right place before you can find it, right? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Actually, let's go back to uh, verse 23. To the general assembly in the church of the firstborn who were registered in heaven, 
to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkling of blood that speaks better things than Abel. And so we realize that under the new covenant, under the old covenant, there was a sprinkling of blood that had to take place. Remember, Abel's offering or, or sacrifice brought a sweet aroma to God. The, the smoke went up, everything was right. And, but yet, we have even a better covenant than we did with, uh, than he did with Abel. Um, or Abel did with God. And so we realize that in, in establishing all that, I realize that we have a job to do. And I'm going to tell you, I have been to every kind of uh, salvation plan you could. Uh, growing up, we went to uh, the four spiritual laws. Uh, we went to uh, Campus Crusade uh, thing, all those things that we learned. And what I've learned through that time, all of that's good. But, uh, go ahead and turn the, uh, the computer on, please. There we go. Um, what I figured out was, it doesn't matter how good you know the plan. You have got to listen to the Holy Spirit at how much of the plan you're going to give at the time that you, you need to give it. Because everybody is going to be different. Everybody that you come in contact with, some of them may be able to handle a whole plan all at once. Just like we've got it marked out in our altar Bibles. In other words, uh, other ones, they're only going to be, they only need so much. Um, so we're going to look at, at uh, three different plans, but realizing that when, when I called it three different plans, it also means that you may mix it up. It may not be, this is plan one, this is plan two, and this is plan three. Even though I called them that, I just did it to separate things. So when we look at plan one, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There may be somebody that that, that won't mean anything to them because they already know that they're, uh, they need something. I, I, when I sat down with uh, the Muslim guy in, uh, John is his name, when I sat down with him in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, he already knew that he needed something. He just didn't know what it was he needed. And so that right there wouldn't have done any good for him because he already knew where he was at and what was going on in his life. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So all of a sudden you could take Romans 3.23 and bypass that because somebody already knows what they are but this talks about hey for what's going on in your life and where you're at you, you, God gave you a gift and his name is Jesus and so all of a sudden you see how one might be too much and, and one be just exactly what they need and I'm not saying that either one of these I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to tell you exactly what you need what you need to share but we need to be familiar with the plan. We need to be familiar. We need to be familiar with the 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 plan that's marked out in all these altar Bibles, so that we know what's going on. Because if I have to go hunt a Bible up when somebody needs it, it's going to be too late by the time I get back. Sometimes, so we want to be instant in season. We want to be instant out of season. We want to be ready, and we want to not be too pushy. And by not being pushy means that. When they're in a position, because here's the, here's the thing you got to remember. And this is what I didn't learn in all the things that I went to growing up. I didn't learn that somebody has to have ears to hear. Um, I probably didn't learn that until I sat with a, a guy named Milo Martin, 
uh, about 24 years ago, and Milo told me, he says, you know, I sat in church for 27 years every Sunday with my wife, and I never knew Jesus Christ as my Savior. I heard the plan of salvation over and over and over again, but he said, one Sunday I had ears to hear, and I received. And that's what you got to remember. It doesn't matter what you tell somebody. If the Holy Spirit doesn't take care of preparing the way, what you're going to do is going to be unfruitful. And not that we don't want to go ahead and have them know. We want to have them know. But the, the likelihood is that everybody already knows they just need some direction in that place. And I'm talking about here in the United States. And there are a few people that, that I've run into, like John, who never heard the plan of salvation, but he knew the Holy Spirit had already prepared him to receive that day. Romans 5.21 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, death through sin, thus death spread to all men because all had sinned. I'm sorry. What did I say, 521? It, it says 512, and I got it right here, and I just didn't uh, pay attention, okay? Thank you. Romans 58. You, you know what you just did? You just said I wasn't perfect. I don't know. That might have won. I, I'm just kidding. Tamara said, get over it, I think. I, I, I heard her say something. I think she, that's what she said. Oh. <laughs> I guess <laughs> I'm going to get out of this real quick. Romans 5, 8. Okay. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so then we go to, to Romans uh, 10, and usually we quote 9 and 10, but, you know, there's a whole plan in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13, says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. You know what that just said? If they're not ready to receive, they're not getting nothing. Every time you see me pray the prayer in church, whether it's, or, or I say, confess Jesus as Lord in church, you notice I said, if you said that today and you meant it, because somebody might say it, and they really don't believe it in their heart. And it didn't bear any fruit in that place. And so what we want to do is we want to get in the position that we know that that ground has already been prepared before we get there. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There it is. Kelly probably kicked it over for me. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we look at that whole part in the whole uh, four verses is part of the plan. And realizing that if I just go to Romans 10, 9, and 10, which can be a, a habit that we get in, then we miss 13. It says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So God won't turn anybody away. And some people think that they are so bad that there's no way God will ever take them. I... Uh, I went to a, a lot of classes with a, a, a actually a, a NRA classes with a guy that he had asked me, he says, what's the next, next class you're taking? 
And I didn't know why he was asking me. And it was because he wanted to be in every class that I was because he wanted to be partnered up with me. Um, as I got talking to him and I got to know him, he had been a sniper in Vietnam. Um, he uh, was one of the guys that uh, made those mile, mile and a half off shots and then ran to another tree so they didn't know where that shot came from and he kept moving trees. And he told me, he says, uh, and, and I'll never forget the date, I just don't remember the year. He said, one day uh, he, he went with us to, uh, he went with Keith and I to Front Sight. And I pre uh, Keith preached at a cutting in Las Vegas that day and then we came back to our hotel room and I preached via Skype in Keith's church that day and at the end of it I gave the plan of salvation I said I, I gave the Romans 10 9 and 10 and uh, then I said uh, repeat this with me and, and I did what I do here <clears throat> and afterward he come up to Keith and I and he told me he says you know July 18th, and I don't remember the year, he says, uh, I decided because of everything that I had to do that night um, that uh, God would never take me. And he says, what I learned was God loves me no matter what I've done. And he said, I received Jesus this morning. And, uh, and I didn't even know all the time I'd spent with him and I didn't know what kept drawing him to me. And, and I realized later on, that it was the Holy Spirit dealing with him all the time and he was ready that day. If, if I'd have done it sooner, he wouldn't have been ready. But just on the day, remember this, God will give you the words for that day, for that person, and it may be different tomorrow for somebody else. Because... Uh, all of a sudden, you know, he saw something that he had never seen before. And the guy had been in church for years over and over and over. Um, but he still had that, uh, that place that, that he thought that uh, God wouldn't take him. And, and you'll run into a lot of people, more people than you know of, have that kind of thinking. If they've done things in their life that they're, they're ashamed of or whatever it is, you know, the devil beats them up and, and makes them think that they're not worthy. And the fact is, the blood of Jesus, we know, makes all of them worthy. And I don't have to preach to the choir about that. Okay, plan two, Proverbs 14, 12. says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. And... Uh, I can tell you where this fits. A lot of times in people's life, they'll go, well, you know, I'm a good person. I don't uh, run around on my wife. I don't do this. I don't do that. You know, I'm, and, and I know people that are uh, such good people that they're the hardest people in the world to get to, to realize they need to have Jesus. But if you will depend on the Holy Spirit to, to prepare that way, and, not, and I'm, not gonna, I'm not telling you that everybody will change. Everybody will make the choice. There'll be those that choose not to make the choice. And they made a choice in what they did. But this is one place, um, you know, uh, uh, there's a way that seems right to a man. It might seem right to you, but that's not God's way. God, God has a different plan in the end of your plan will wind up in a, in a godless eternity. 1 Timothy 2, 3, and 5, 3 through 5 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. The one we all want to use first is John 3.16. And, and we know that, in fact, is if you pick up one of these Bibles, I looked to make sure I was right. 
on it. It says salvation scriptures are in red. Begin with John 3.16. And John 3.16 is always appropriate, but sometimes they already know. And, and so you got to just, you got to depend on what, what uh, the Holy Spirit tells you where to start and not what's written. These, and these are a great tool. These are, these were done so that we could go to the altar and pick it up, any of us, and be able to use it. It goes through the uh, salvation, it goes through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and it goes through uh, healing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 1 John 1 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, and a few of these are, are the old staples of how to, how to share salvation. Uh, 1 John 1 9 is something it seems like we always share. John 3 16 is something we always share. But what you do have to remember is sometimes people have been prepared already past that point. And so we've got to depend on the Holy Spirit to uh, tell us where we need to go and how we need to go. Um, 1 John 5 11 and 12 says, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. And so we look, there's one that we don't normally use, but sometimes it's appropriate to, uh, to use some of the scriptures that we don't think of necessarily as salvation scriptures. Because this literally says, you know, if you, if you don't have God, you don't have to tell them, well, if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to hell. What you have to tell them is, is that if you don't have God, you don't have that eternal life that the Bible talks about. Plan 3, Isaiah 59, 2. But your iniquities I've separated you from your God. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear you. Hebrews 9, 14 and 15 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Now I'm going to tell you that one of the things that you want to do is you may or may not want to be, sometimes we get versed in uh, the New King James or the King James. I find that growing up in, in, uh, in the church that I grew up in that I get really good at, it doesn't matter what I'm reading, when I quote a verse, I quote it in King James, because that's the way I learned it. And the fact that we have to look and see, okay, if there's another translation, the New Living Translation is generally a very good translation for this. The message is not a translation, it's a paraphrase, and sometimes the language in it is easier to understand. But some of the, the things uh, they will take, uh, they'll take the meat out of it. They'll take the meaning of the blood out of it. Um, I don't even think about using the NIV for, for this, and that doesn't mean there's not some good stuff in it. But the reason I don't think about it is because I don't have to figure out if they took the blood out of it or not because there's 78 times in that translation that the blood was taken out and in 78 times that it, it there's one psalm that it doesn't even mean what, it, what every other translation says. So you, you have to be careful that when you're using stuff, people can understand it because they don't understand Elizabeth in English out of the King James Bible most of the time. 
And sometimes the New King James gets to be the, exactly the same way. Um, so what we have to do is we have to remember, you know, I need to be prepared ahead of time. If I'm going to have a, a pocket Bible to uh, share salvation with somebody sometime, I, I may want to have a completely different translation than I'm normally using in church or, or someplace else or that, or that I like to read. Um, one of the reasons we use the New King James in the church is because a lot of the King James words that we don't use anymore, the New King James actually uses a word that is the meaning of that word or the meaning of the original text, but uh, it takes out the these and thous and uh, puts in you and yours. And so it's easier to understand, it's easier to read, but at the same time we don't lose the meaning. And so we've got to get into a position that we know uh, what, we, what we're reading and what impact it's going to have on somebody else. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be become children of God to those who believe in his name. So here's another one that we get in a place that it tells us that salvation comes through the name of Jesus. But this one is maybe for somebody it's going to be easier for them to understand than, than the, the last one we used. So that's why we don't necessarily want to... I remember uh, there's kind of a, a preacher joke about a guy that came to, to church. And actually there was two people in church that day. And, uh, and the pastor preached the whole message. For an hour he, he, he preached to these two guys. And uh, afterwards, one of the guys came up to him. He said, you know, uh, that was a really good message. He says, but you know, when you have two cows that show up at the trough, you don't feed the whole bale. And uh, in, in, that, in that particular joke, um, I think about this. Sometimes when we're sharing with somebody, we can share so much that all of a sudden they got past ready to, to, to receive because all of a sudden they locked up and they got lost way back. When I, uh, when I shared with John, in, uh, I took about 10 minutes, maybe 15. I went from basically from Genesis to Revelation and told him everything that Jesus had done. Because he said, Jesus in my house was a cuss word. That's all I know about Jesus. And uh, finally I looked at him and I said, uh, John, would you like to receive Jesus? He said, I thought you never were going to ask. So what he told me was in the first five minutes, he was ready to do it. But I decided I was going to share it. And that's the last time I've done what I did that day because he was ready. When I walked up there, he was ready. And basically, uh, I could have shared uh, John 3.16 and John 1.12. And, and, and the guy would have received Jesus right then. And we'd have had exactly the same result that we had. And so that's one of the things that we got... And, and it kind of cracked me up when he said it. He says, I thought you never were going to ask. In other words, man, let's just get it over with. And, uh, uh, and, and he was ready. 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4. Or 1, yeah, 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away in its reserve for you in heaven. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For grace... For by grace have you been saved through faith, not that of yourselves, but it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You know, another one of those uh, salvation scriptures that we all learn when we're little, every plan that you go through to learn that, you learn that. But it may not mean anything to somebody else that you're, you're having something to do with. So again... You know, the reason we're looking at this again is because we've got to be prepared, but we also have to be 
listening to the Holy Spirit at how we're going to talk to somebody and how we're going to get to that, that place. And this means we're done. So, yeah, I thought it was... I got to talk to Lori and see if we can change the logo on that, but I really like the picture. The, this was an uh, ad that we did in uh, actually Weatherford Now uh, when we were uh, in that, and they're uh, trying to get us to go back in it right now, so we may do something like that. Father, I thank you for the opportunity that you give us to be your kids. Father, thank you that you have given us your spirit to lead us in this and help us learn how to... Father, because I believe in this day that there's going to be people that want to know Jesus as their Savior with all the things that are going on. Father, I ask you right now to be with the families of those that have uh, been shot this week and, and those that have been wounded, the ones that died and the ones that have been wounded. Father, wrap your arms around them and remind them that you love them. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. Or a great evening, I'm sorry. It's past day. I hope you've listened to the word uh, during this service so that you can have your life changed. You're, you'll see how the DNA of your entire life is about to change. Also, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never made him the Lord of your life. Paul says this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's very simple to do that. All I have to really do is say, Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. That's exactly what Paul said. Many times we have people pray a prayer uh, so that we know that we've drawn a line in the sand and we've let everybody know that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. So I want to do that with you right now so that you can literally say, today is the day and whatever time it is, wherever you're at watching, you'll know that you've had a change in your life. So say this with me. You can bow your head and close your eyes, or you can keep your eyes open. Uh, and uh, I, I always love what uh, Oop Schroner, who is a prophet of God, said. He said, if you're drowning in a swimming pool at the Holiday Inn, you wouldn't want anybody to close their eyes. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're literally drowning in a swimming pool of sin someplace. So say this with me. Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for me. I confess my sin. I ask you to forgive me of them. And Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And I commit today that I will live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, if you just did that, then what you just did is you invited Jesus Christ to live in your life, to be the Lord of your life, and you're going to see a complete change in every area of your entire life right now. If you've watched this broadcast, you also know that uh, what we've talked about at different times uh, through different broadcasts is, is finances. If we, the Bible tells us in Luke 6.38 that if we give, that he'll give back to us, press down, shaken together and running over to make room for more. Then it says, uh, right after that, and this is Luke 6, 38. Then it says, whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So if you become a covenant partner with us today, there's many things that we do for outreaches here out of this church and out of the ministry. Not only 
here in Weatherford, Texas, but all over the country and all over the world. We uh, have rodeo events right here in the arena where we have uh, he paid your fees. Simply means that nobody pays to, to enter. They come. We have a devotional. It becomes an outreach opportunity. And we do that in rodeo arenas, horse show arenas, and roping arenas all over the United States. We drill wells and have uh, crusades in Nigeria, Cameroon, Togo, Uganda, and Tanzania. And by doing each one of those, uh, you become, and becoming a covenant partner with this ministry, you become a part of those outreaches. You take part in the reward in the end time, as well as you get back pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more because you're a covenant partner, and this is good ground. Bible tells us in another place he gives back. Uh, this is in uh, Mark, the 10th chapter. It tells us that he gives back to us some 30, some 60, and some 100-fold. Well, this ground has been worked. It has is, is been fertilized, and, and I would expect a 100-fold return on that. So there's a uh, website that you've seen. Do two things. One, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, let us know at that website address and we'll send you some information so that you'll be able to walk that walk and succeed in life in your new Christian life. Also, if you give, there's a donate button right there. If you press that donate button and give, that seed gets planted into good ground and it comes back to you pressed down, shaken together and running over. Kathleen and I pray every day over every partner of this ministry. So I want to make sure that we're able to pray for you and, and let us know the things that you may have need of in life so that we can bring them before the Father. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.